Welcome to yet another Guide Wednesday where I use my 6,000 hours to teach you how to play Apex Legends. Today, I'm gonna teach you Bloodhound. While Bloodhound is the third most picked legend in the game, they are by far the most common support legend at a 9.4% pick rate. Bloodhound primarily gets picked through public gameplay all the way to high tier ranked, sometimes as a solo kill hunting menace with a speed boost that increases on Nox, but usually just as a support to a team, providing their teammates with constant information such as enemy position, in the shape of footsteps, or a 3 second wall hack. A well placed scan can be the deciding factor in a team fight, which may be the one reason why Bloodhound is played so much. There's also the cheese factor of the scan combined with smoke effects such as the caustic gas or the Bangalore smoke, where Bloodhound and her team can shoot through the smoke onto their unsuspecting enemies. So let's break open their kit. Bloodhound's passive tracker leaves clues behind enemies, allowing you to play as your own private eye and using said clues to chase down an enemy team. These tracks are either colored red or more of a grayish color. The more red the tracks are, the fresher the prints. When the tracks are gray, it's been about a minute since they were left there. Tracks are visible from farther away if viewed through a scope. Bloodhound's passive will clue you in on countless of events that have happened within the last minute or so, and here is a full list of what it tracks from the Apex Legends fandom wiki. Bloodhound will receive clues on things such as footprints, slide marks, where someone has mantled, where someone has jumped down or landed. Bloodhound can ping said clues to relay information to the team by saying either somebody's been here or there has been a recent battle here. The tracker clues disappear completely after 90 seconds. Seeing as Bloodhound is a recon character, they also have a secondary passive which allows them to scan a beacon to see where the next ring will pull. It takes about 7 seconds and locks you in animation, so try not to do this when enemies are around, and this can be used again after the ring has closed. Once you become more proficient with Bloodhound and at the game in general, you will realize that the tracks usually aren't that useful and you can find clues of your enemy's whereabouts just by looking up from the ground and at them as they're shooting at you. And you will learn how to use the real powerhouse of Bloodhound's kit, their tactical ability. Bloodhound's tactical ability, the Eye of the All Power, scans a 125 degree cone in front of you, scanning enemies, traps and other vital information within those degrees up to 75 meters in front of you. Wallhack is an incredibly valuable ability, and as such it has been placed on a hefty 25 second cooldown. If you scan a player, they will be visible through walls for 3 seconds, and if you scan a placeable item such as a trap, jump pad or fence, it remains highlighted forever until destroyed. Keep in mind that using the blood on scan is very visible from the enemy and anyone around you, so don't use it if you want to avoid attention. As I mentioned, having a 3 second wall hack is incredibly strong and can be a win condition for a coordinated team. The tactical can be used to find overextended players and figuring out where exactly to push or make it easier to focus fire someone who's trying to play cover as you will no longer need to react to them peeking out and instead know exactly when and where to shoot. Players who realize they can't peek when scanned will stand still for the duration of the scan which might give your team the opening to push up uncontested. Bloodhound's ultimate, Beast of the Hunts, turns the screen grey, highlights enemies and tracks in a deep red color as well as raises a Bloodhound's movement speed by 30%. Every knock, keep in mind a knock is enough, will extend the duration of the ultimate by 5 to 15 seconds depending on how much is left on the cooldown of the ability. In addition to buffing up a Bloodhound's abilities, the ultimate also lowers the long cooldown of the tactical from 25 seconds to 8 allowing a Bloodhound to continually scan in the middle of a teamfight and keeping the enemies revealed every 5 seconds. Bloodhound's ultimate highlights enemies in red even through smokes, allowing you to hit targets that may not expect it. It can also be used to more easily track targets on long distances, as it is easier to follow the small red moving targets than everything in the normal muddy apex colors. Keep in mind that the activation of Bloodhound's ultimate is hard to miss as it is very loud, so stealth isn't really an option. Enemies might be wary about playing around smokes if they hear a blood on ultimate this late into the game, but you might still catch someone off guard. However, the sheer loudness of Bloodhound's ultimate might actually end up being an advantage. You can use the ultimate to trick the team that you will push, or even use it to mask other vital sun cues such as arrests. In team play and positioning, Bloodhound has a very large and easy to hit frame. This, in combination with their value from their backlines, means that this support legend wants to play as far back as possible, but still remaining attached to their team. Well-timed and well-placed scans can win you a fight without you ever firing a shot. As Bloodhound wants to play in the back of their team, you want to run mid-range to close-range guns. Obviously, there's always still value from shotguns, but it comes down to how you decide to play and what other teams are running. For example, if you're playing high grounds or in the open and you don't really find yourself taking bubble fights, you are more useful with an R301 in hand. A Bloodhound benefits from combinations such as the R301 and a marksman weapon or sniper rifle. 
If you and your team plays aggressively, you might want to run a close range to mid range combination, such as our R99, R31, coupled with a shotgun like the Peacekeeper or the Mastiff. Have you found another combination that works for you? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of wanted attention, if you are enjoying the video so far, make sure that you've hit the like button so it can reach more people. And he has a Spitfire too. That's crazy. Right? Good video about the punch boosting stuff, by the way, thank you. It's, it wasn't really a bunch of punch boosting, but... I forget where the Ash went. That was a weird ultimate from Ash. Do people play Bloodhound and Soul like your chat? Cause, cause right, like he's such a, is a, is a fucking team play legend. That's just horrible. He's a team play legend, so I'm just trying to think, like, have I ever seen someone solo cures blood on? I mean, I have. But, you know, like, successfully as a content creator sort of deal. Because I feel like you need a good team to back up the scans. That is just on me. happening with that suck good job guys Wait, is it in the thing? He's in the thing in pubs chat! Isn't he? Just as a quick side note, we've gotten really far into the video. Thank you so much for making it all the way here. Let me know in the comments if you hear this, I guess. And as a thank you for watching this far through, I'll leave you with a personal tip. In any level of team play, I like to think of the support player, in this case Bloodhound, as sort of an always moving slingshot. You want to swing forward, clear space, and then root yourself so your teammates can ground themselves with your new position and in turn slingshot themselves forward, allowing you to sort of constantly clear more and more space and move forward. Anyways, that is a real quick guide on how to play Bloodhound in 2022, so if you want to catch me using these tricks and more to play Bloodhound aggressively and get a 20 bomb, check out the video above. Anyways, I'll see you all next time.